rumors are circulating online of a UFO crash near Maje, Brazil, 20 miles north of Rio de Janeiro. Local press picked up the story, but so far we have no concrete evidence of anything. That doesn't mean Brazil is lacking in detailed, documented UFO cases, though. In fact, rarely seen declassified documents disclose significant encounters in the country, including some that corroborate sightings seen throughout the world. Join us today as we dive into this rich history. We cover forgotten declassified files. Subscribe to join us. Thanks to the efforts of A.J. Javard and archivist John Greenwald at the Black Vault, 20 envelopes of once-classified material from the Brazilian government are online. One of the earliest cases came on June 16, 1956. That night, a law professor from Santos, a coastal seaport, was in the nearby tourist city of São Sebastião. According to the file, after dinner he decided to go for a walk on the beach. It was between 1910 and 1915. As the professor was looking out at the nearby island of Ilabella, he noticed something. Umhata de agua translates to a jet of water he saw rise from the ocean surface. I immediately thought of a whale, he said, but a buoyant device emerged from the water. Disc-shaped, it flew toward him and touched down on the beach with landing gear. Through an opening, two men emerged. They were tall, pale, had blonde hair with clear, serene eyes, his account states, wearing a kind of green jumpsuit. At least what's in public, nothing in the archives suggests the government tried to corroborate this with anyone else at the beach. The file does indicate, however, that his story was consistent when he told it to journalists and later ufologists. His claims of what happened next are spectacular. He asked them if they had an accident or were looking for something. He repeated it in French, English, and Italian to no answer. Somehow, though, he felt an irresistible urge to enter the craft. He went in, and the two men followed. Once inside, he noticed water visible from portholes. It's raining, he asked. To his surprise, their reply just appeared in his mind. It was not rain but rather the water came from rotation in the parts that made up the ship. Though he didn't have the necessary background in physics to comprehend, he claims he was told it worked by generating some kind of vacuum. For what felt like 40 minutes, his watch stopped. The professor claims he was inside. During the trip, he asked several times where they came from, but he did not get an answer. The professor claims he agreed to meet the strange beings again, the following year on August 12, 1957. Unfortunately, word got out of his encounter before this. According to the file, someone known only as Aviator Colonel Coquiera warned him, If I were you, I would not go to that meeting. I will have two squadrons of jet fighters there to receive the flying saucer. Unfortunately, nothing in the archive confirms air activity above the beach that night. But the professor did later state, publicly on television, that he watched the area from afar on August 12th and did see something in the general form of a disk above Ilabella. It's unknown if it was intercepted. And like many of these files, the military did not take additional attempts to verify these stories. They simply looked to collect them. Anytime we review large collections like this, we attempt to determine whether any correlations exist within the dataset. Another file discloses photographs and analysis of a flying saucer seen above a community south of Rio de Janeiro. A press photographer and reporter for a local lifestyle magazine were on a routine job when they suddenly spotted a plane flying sideways. They realized it wasn't a plane, but a disc with a raised center. The photos were published in their magazine, but the photographer claims neither he nor the reporter were paid extra. The Brazilian Air Force also got involved. In 1959, they reported on TV that they believed the photos were legitimate. Their American counterparts didn't think so, though. 
Analysis by the USAF-funded Condon Committee in 1968 attempted to debunk them. This case has been presented as one of the strongest genuine flying saucer sightings, an investigator writes. Except for one thing, an inconsistency, they say, is on photo number four. Here, the disc appears illuminated from the left, but the ground is lighter on the right. Condon suggests this inconsistency may mean the photo is a fake, but they miss something. As the Brazilian analysis suggests, a shining sun from the right means the sun would have to be in the southwest part of the sky, something that never happens in that region. The texture of the foliage is also varied to the degree that no clear shadowing can be discerned, despite Condon's claims. Brazil AF doesn't determine what the object is, but they do provide some illustrations. And interestingly, other files provide sketches too. Like here, when an industrial worker tells officials he saw a sphere above a football field in 69. It had a disc around it and two illuminated antennas. Brazil's SIOANA division, under jurisdiction of its Air Force to study UFOs, cataloged several similar encounters. Most spheres, they wrote, moved in straight paths and were sometimes stationary. If you recall our episode on the U.S. Navy's 1973 sighting in Northwest Australia, that object had similar features, minus the antennae. And both UFOs bear a resemblance to this 2014 sighting in San Diego, California. The footage has been enhanced by an AI program for clarity. Here's the original. The more we review these files, the more it becomes clear. Brazil's military takes them seriously. Though we wonder if we have the full story. The envelopes are full of cases, but some have no details beyond the summaries. Like here, when multiple army personnel report seeing an oval-shaped object above a city in 71. Or here, when a Ministry of Aeronautics file discusses a 67 encounter with two meter tall beings wearing clothes similar to that of divers near the inland city of Belo Horizonte. They were seen near a football field around an object the witnesses said only looked like a mushroom. The file claims they had wide eyes and their nostrils were protected by a dark cloth. A tube came out of the suit's chest and went into the back of the neck with an antenna on the head or helmet. The document refers to film and photos, but doesn't provide them. Another one, this one in an Air Force file, describes a craft that looked like a carousel near a cattle pasture in Pirasanunga. A witness saw three crew that looked human wearing helmets. One carried something like binoculars, the second a lantern, and the third a cartridge. After a few minutes, the object flew away with great speed. Most famously, the Air Force categorized dozens of sightings in the Northeast Amazon, in the state of Colares, in 77. Residents claimed they sustained injuries caused by lights in the sky and were terrified so much that they began setting off fireworks. Finally, they requested the military's assistance, who launched Operation Prato, or plate, that year. The investigation was closed after finding no unusual phenomena, but photo evidence of lights and even imprints left behind by craft are in the files. We're going to do a deep dive on Operation Plate soon, so stay tuned. It will take us more time to translate, but we'll do our best to resurface more Brazilian cases. Special thank you to our Patreon supporters, including JMDFM. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you like what we do, consider joining them on Patreon and help us produce one new episode every week. And let us know in the comments. Do you know anyone who has seen anything in Brazil? Thanks again, and see you next time.